Greetings, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, I wanted to do something slightly different. Normally I'm having like mini PCs, Android boxes that we can play some retro games with, or in other words, emulation. I have a couple of projects and I just need a kit. And I mean like a PC kit for something else. And I was more like, do you know what? This kit can be like maybe a very cool way to basically build ourselves a PC. And let's see how far we can push it with emulation when we're going to get like an older i5. So take consideration to subscribe, hit the little bell, and join me here on the Wicked Family. Because we're going to take you on a ride, going to take you on an adventure of building yourself an own PC. Okay, so normally like when you're going to do like search for these videos, you will just find like an, uh, somebody who's making emulation stuff or talking about what you can do with it. We're going to do that too, but also I want to include how we're going to build ourselves this PC. Just for fun, for the people maybe interested in, I'll leave some time steps, so if you don't like this part, you can just skip it if you want to. If you want to feel naughty, you can use the naughty skipping, but okay, nevertheless. Let's take a close look what are we going to use and what are we going to do today. Okay, so what we're going to use is the i5 9th generation, or better called the 9400F. This thing doesn't come with a GPU installed inside the chip itself, so we need to have a separate GPU. Take consideration if you're going to build like a mini PC purely for emulation, you'll want to use a dedicated graphic card. You need to get yourself a CPU with a graphic chip inside. Something you need to take consideration. But okay, so this chip itself is a quite powerful one. It's not maybe the latest i5, but just for the purpose I wanted to use this is just more than enough. And also I just like to see how far we can push this device because this chip was on sale here and including everything else. So I think it's going to be like a pretty damn awesome kit basically for emulation. Another thing you need to take consideration. So the main board I'm using isn't full ATX. If you're going to get yourself a cheaper board here, you can basically cut even more costs. When you're going to get yourself like even a basic board, just a micro ATX. ATX, and uh, yeah, they're like cheaper and will give you less option, but for emulation, for building this in a mini PC would be even like a better solution. But that is not the case over here. The board itself looks really clean and personally I really love it. It's not like the high-end boards, it's like a basic gigabyte board, but it will do the trick for me. But again, like it depends like what kind of build you're having. So this is a DDR4 socket 1151. So the first thing I need to do is removing the plastic cap and we're going to assemble the CPU. So take consideration, you need to be very careful because the pins are on here, not on the chip itself anymore. And I think it was like they changed it out with the socket 775 Intel. And what you need to do when you're going to plug it in, you need to check where are basically the markings or the small arrow. Here you can see, you can only put it in only one way. So please don't mess it up, otherwise you're going to ru ruin your main board and your CPU. You going to blow it up. Okay, so let's put it back in. You're only going to see my hand here, but here you can see like how it needs to put in. And this is the way how it is. So basically, that's the only thing that you need to do. It's easy peasy. And then for the next thing, we're gonna to need to close the cover over here. And this locking mechanism is super easy to use. Let's lock it up. And that's the only thing that we need to do. And it's done. Okay, next up, you're having here four slots, but I'm going to use one. I wanted to yeah, use dual channel, but for my build, or better that emulation doesn't really matter. So I'm going to use only one of them. There's only one way it can go in, so align the whole of the RAM with the pin on the socket of the RAM itself. All right, so let's give you a closer view. And it clicks in, and I'm also double checking that the pins are correctly positioned. And that's the only thing, and the RAM is installed. Alright, so I'm going to use myself a bigger CPU cooler because I have this addiction of big CPU coolers and fans. For the i5 I'm using, it's going to be completely overkill, but I'd rather like having a cool CPU that will run for years and years to come than having like a CPU that's going to be like throttling because it's basically getting too hot. So it's going to be quite an investment. This was a quite expensive one. Normally I'm spending like 20, 30 euros on it. This thing was like triple the price. I'm oh, sorry, I mean double the price. So thinking about 60 euro. But what I noticed, the first thing, like this thing is gigantic heavy. It's big. It gives like extremely good cooling. And yep, the fans are like high quality. Like there is almost no noise. Damn it. I can't get it out. Ah, come here. Ah. So in the past, I have bought these Scythe Muggens, and I must like, these things are like very expensive, but they are like really good quality, and the performance are very good. So basically what you're getting is a very high quality product, but you're going to pay for it. 
And what I noticed with this thing, it comes with everything you need, including a very nice screwdriver. And I like the screwdriver, by the way. Some nice instructions, very clear to me what you need to do. Yep, and the screwdriver, you need it for assemble this freaking weird cooler. Yep, oh, and we're going to get a splitter because we can use two fans on the CPU part or the CPU fan controller and every single thing like some extra. Ugh, it's falling again. We're going to get ourselves this special thermal paste. Ugh, damn, this thing is slippery. <laughs> For the next part, let's assemble the CPU cooler. And this thing is a freaking beast. But assembly is quite easy with the Intel socket I'm having here. So anything you need to do is adding the adapter, the necessary screws, putting everything in place, clean up the surface of the CPU cooler, and put some thermal paste on it, and we are just ready to go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And that is what I really like about this thing. It's super convenient, you need to be very careful, and everything has been done. You're just done. Like, only two screws need to be assembled. I can see like the freaking thermal paste pouring out, so it has been divided very well. All right, so let's not turn it on because that is not what we're going to need to do now. No, 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 there's something else. Next thing that we need to do is assemble the splitter because we need to activate the fans. And if the fans don't work, it's not a big problem the first like one, two, maybe three minutes because this cooler is so big, it can basically like consume all of the heat of the CPU. Damn it, my pins have been bented, so I need to be careful with these things. But like I mentioned before in this video, is like there is no GPU inside of this. I recommend like if you want to build this mini PC, you don't want to have the hassle of a VGA card. Like basically get yourself the chip that comes including GPU built in. Because these things are pretty damn okay if you want to play some low-end emulation. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're just going to use this 560 Ti. It's very cheap. And yeah, let's boot it up the system. You can see it works very well. The first thing I'm noticing, like the fan itself, it's very silent and it's getting the system quite cool. So it's going idle for around, let's say, 17 up to 20 Celsius. Okay, so let's take a close look at some other things. First of all, how can we boot up with Balashira, stuff like that. That's what we're going to talk about first before we're going to do some more testing. So let's go. But when you're going to get yourself an Android box or mini PC, there are no controllers that will be included. So you need to get yourself one or two. Okay, so the first one you can get is the PlayStation 2 fake controllers. I wouldn't really recommend it, but just wanted to show you. These are the controllers that you're going to get with your Super Console X systems. Not the best one. Then we're going to get our typical Xbox 360 controller. Nowadays, here we can find these things really cheap. And there's like knockoffs on AliExpress that you can basically get. And they are like pretty damn good. Okay, and last but not least, we're going to get ourselves like the PlayStation 4 weird hybrid thing. And this controller, I... At the beginning, I never heard of it, but some of the PC edition will give you two or one or two of them. It also comes in wireless edition and, of course, the one with the wire. These are, like, super comfortable and really nice high-quality controllers with a very nice D-pad. So these are, like, very nice options that you can get, especially when it comes to the Xbox 360 and this controller. These are, like, amazing controllers, and they are not really expensive. So when it comes to using Balacera, there are different ways to go. So if you want to use a certain like piece of hardware, you can use it like four different ways, in my opinion. Then we're going to get ourselves the very convenient and really cool thing is an SSD. You can basically put an SSD inside your PC, install some bottle share on this bad boy, and you get to have a lot of fun. The main problem at the moment when making this video, SSDs are very expensive. Another option that we're going to get, and this is way cheaper, you can get yourself a 2.5 inch platter disc. These things are not very expensive. And yeah, if you're going to load up, you have a lot of space for not a lot of money. Another plug and play solution, if you just want to have Balashira, like in plug and play, you can use an, basically a an very easy plug and play send disc or another brand. Like you need to have a very fast port in combination with very fast a thumb drive. You can use this little Balashira plug and play. And of course, the last number at least, and the cheap to the cheap cheap edition is basically get yourself a 3.5 inch. But if you cannot assemble it, what you need to do is also get yourself an external enclosure. Because you basically use an external enclosure in combination with Bodocera and USB. Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So Wicked asked me to do a quick tutorial on how to install Bodocera on various platforms. So without any further delay, let's jump into it. Now we're going to do this on a USB flash drive, but you could do the same thing on a micro SD card or even an external hard drive. Most important piece is to go to the Botticera website, then go into the download section, and then find whatever platform it is you want to install Botticera on. We're going to install it on a Windows machine, so I'm going to click this X64 option here. 
Once we've downloaded the file, we're just going to flash it directly onto that USB flash drive. We're going to use an app called Belena Etcher to do that. In that first tab, just navigate to wherever that file is that you just downloaded. On that second tab, select whatever it is you're going to flash it onto, in this case the USB flash drive. And then on that third tab, just tap flash. It's going to say, do you really want to do this? And you say, yeah, man, I want to do it. It's going to take about a minute to flash. And once it's done, a bunch of windows are going to pop up. Go ahead and exit out of all of these. Now, if you're using a Windows based machine like I am here, you can actually just boot directly into that flash drive from here. You want to go into the recovery options section in your settings and then go into this advanced startup restart now button. You'll have a couple different options here. Select the use a device and then find your hard drive or flash drive or micro SD card and then select that. From there, it's just going to use that device that we just flashed. And just like that, it's loading Botticera. Now that's only one of two ways that you can actually access Botticera from a Windows machine. The other one is you can just do it from booting up. What you do is you start up your computer and then you immediately start pressing the F12 button on a USB keyboard. And that'll open up the boot menu and from there you can select your boot device. And just like before, we're going to select that USB drive. And just like that, it's going to boot into Botticera from there. So if you're using a Windows machine, these are the two different ways that you can access Botticera. Now, once you're inside, you're going to need to add your games, and that's kind of an involved process. In a nutshell, what you want to do is you want to press the F1 key on your keyboard, which will bring up a file explorer. And from there, you can move your game files from an external hard drive or even the internal hard drive on your Windows machine. And you're going to move all of these into the ROMs and BIOS folders that are located within that flash drive. Now, there's a lot more to it. And if you have any other questions, I would recommend checking out some of the tutorials I have on my channel. But for now, thanks for watching and back to you, Wicked. What you also can do is get yourself a Super Console X hard drive. What you're going to get is basically a 2.5 inch hard drive. Yeah, you're going to get a case and you're going to get yourself, yeah, like a preset Botticera. So all you need to do is adding your files. Another way you can go is the Pokey Pad. And the Pokey Pad is basically like an all-in-one solution. So if you don't want to do like a lot of searching for control or stuff like that, what you're going to get is this very nice fancy case. And inside, you're going to get instruction, how you need to configure everything, how Bodocera works. So there are some slightly some stuff that have been done. You're going to get yourself two wireless controllers. I think there are different models out there. And this is like the more expensive places to knockoffs. They're not, not the best controllers, but these are not bad at all. It comes with including two 2.4 gigahertz dongles. Then we're going to get ourselves the enclosure with the hard drive. So basically, you can just plug in the Pauki pad with the controller add your stuff and you can go your way and not to forget the fancy casing oh yeah so this is what you're going to get with the power keypad so basically in combination with the super console -like stuff this is what you can do with this bodicera is a really cool piece of software and when you combine it with the right technology we can play a lot of stuff but take consideration this is more like a question how much power do you have and the reason I'm saying how much power, because with an i5 9th generation, it's still not like a super high spec CPU. And in this video, I just want to see how far can we push this and is it worth picking up, let's say new parts or maybe secondhand parts to do some retro gaming slash emulation on this. The consideration PlayStation 3 will not run on the higher stuff. That is something we need to have like an i9 for or maybe a very powerful AMD. So we're starting off with PlayStation 2 and it runs very well with this system. I noticed like with the cheap box I've reviewed back in the day, those will not run PlayStation 2. So we need a quite a lot of good specification for that. Okay, so PlayStation Portable is another system that will run just fine on this. And maybe if you want to push it out, you can maybe put it even to higher resolution. I'm just going to leave it on two times resolution because I'm going to get quite a good performance here. Only the strongest will be chosen. Can you see the darkness of the abyss? I'm not afraid anymore. 
Battle one. Fight. <laughs> Alright, so next up, let's try some MAME. And MAME runs very well on this PC. We could already play a lot of this stuff on, let's say, a $125 PC, or mini PC in that case. So, most of this game run just fine. So where I can see a significant difference to when you're getting on, let's say, an older PC or better said, like a new mini PC that doesn't have a lot of CPU power, Sega Saturn didn't run very well. Same with places 2, and now we're having good performance. When 64, where this struggles on a super console X, where it struggles on a cheaper PC or other stuff, this i5 is powerful enough to run my favorite game, or one of my favorite games on the N64. Okay, so next up Sega Dreamcast, and I've tried it on low powered boxes and run very well. I did hear some hiccups here and there, but I think I need to do some tinkering with the emulator to get everything working perfectly. But overall, normally like this i5 needs to be fast enough, powerful enough to run the library of Sega Dreamcast. Okay guys, so that concludes this testing video and building. I hope you really enjoyed it and I can do it more often. So let me know in the comments if you liked it. I can like, implement this more in my videos. So when it comes to this, it's a basic setup. This, the GPU is something you need to take consideration. It's cheap, it's old. You can also get this, basically this combination with the built-in GPU of Intel. So I paid around $250, it was in the sale and maybe in the future you can get it even cheaper because there's already like a 9th gen, there's an older generation of Intel CPUs. I want to thank you for watching, consider subscribing, hit that little bell, let me know in the comments what you think of this, and it would be great to see you in the next video. Yeah!